Live a life free from violence and harmful practices. A life free from violence and harmful practices. That is the overall picture, big picture of the Spotlight Initiative. And why we are here today is just a soft part of it. And what brings us here is that we are looking at issues of violence against women and girls, sexual and gender-based violence, harmful practices, what we can do to reduce them, and to promote the enjoyment of sexual and reproductive health and rights by women and girls. This is just one leg of the one we are doing in Lagos. We are also repeating this in Atamawa, Cross River, Ebony, and FC, FCT, and Sokoto. So in essence, I'm happy we have key government officials here, because when this report is published, uh, it will be out there in the public domain, and there will be six other studies of this nature. And so, whatever information we get, as much information as possible as what Lagos State is doing, will be quite helpful to put you in very good state. So we are reviewing the budget for the period 2016 to 2019. And we are looking at whether you have policies, you have plans, you have laws. How are you putting down resources to, for the implementation of these policies and plans? Because I always talk about what I consider to be a continuum. Plan, policy, budget continuum. If you have very beautiful plans and laws, and the time you want to put down resources through the budget, you forget them. They are as good as no policy at all. Because definitely, if the resources are not there, there is no way you can implement it. So we are going to review value for money issues, variance between appropriated and natural releases, compliance with extract laws and policies, as well as identifying the optimal resources needed for the respect, protection, and fulfillment of the rights of women and girls to freedom from violence. Key, th key three obligations of state I mentioned. The obligation to respect, the obligation to protect, and the obligation to fulfill. The first one is a negative obligation in terms of all those rights and duty, all those rights that are due to women and girls to freedom from violence that are already there. You don't need to take steps that will be you know, prevent them from being enjoyed or in any way curtail them. Just leave them as they are. In protection, we are talking about protecting persons who are vulnerable, who are supposed to enjoy their rights from third parties. Third parties who may likely violate these rights. And this is where issues around policing come in. This is even where issues around the courts come in. This is issues of regulation. And then you have this last obligation to fulfill, which is a more positive one in terms of what resources have you put out in the budget. How, what is the content of your laws? What is the content of your policies? What administrative action and remedial actions are you going to give to any person who suffers a violation of his or her right to freedom from violence? And then we are going to look at the minimum core obligations of the state. When I talk about states here, it applies both to the federal, to the states, and the local governments. What is this minimum? Below which we will now say that the state is in violation of its obligations. Below which we now talk about people are not behaving as part of the community of nations in a civilized manner. So, these are the issues we are examining in this study. After the general introductory parts, there will be a look at the legal and policy framework. And then, this will look at our laws and policies on women's from gender, violence against the persons, child rights, maternal and child health, reproductive health and rights, female genital mutilation, rape, child marriage, intimate partner violence, prevention of trafficking in women. We are also going to review laws, policies, programs, for access to family planning services, harmful widowhood practices, HIV prevention and treatment, second chance opportunity for girls, 
one stop centers for victims of sexual assault, domestic violence, medical, psychosocial, forensic, and counseling services for females who are victims of SGBV and other violations. We review laws, policies, and programs related to law enforcement. Whether there are special attendants in the police and what exactly they are doing, judicial interventions, including special courts. I'm happy we have a representative of one of these courts here. And procedures to guarantee justice to victims of SGBV and violence against women and girls. So we are also going to look at issues around the enrollment in schools, women's development centers, Ministry of Women Affairs. Do you have a fiscal responsibility law? What are you doing with it? Do you mainstream issues around gender within fiscal responsibility? Do you have a medium term expenditure framework? What is exactly contained in it? If you have an MTEF, what are the sectoral strategies from all the ministries and departments? Is gender mainstreamed in all these policies and programs that we are mentioning? Then there will be a situation analysis. We have statistics and data coming from various sources. Local ones, the World Bank, WHO, UNFPA, UN Women. But we said, okay, let's focus mainly on the multiple indicator cluster surveys and the Nigerian demographic and health surveys, which are like national surveys that are quite acceptable to a good number of Nigerians. And where we find this lacking, we are looking at what these are international partners from the UNDP to WHO to UNESCO, what statistics and data they have. We look at it to see where level state is within the context of Nigeria, within the context of the whole world. Are we doing well? If we are not doing well, of course, it will lead us to discuss what we can do to remedy the situation. But all these things I've been talking about are literature. Literature in the sense that situation analysis, what is the law and policy provision, what is out there at the international level, we now come home to situate it within budget funding 2016 to 2019. What exactly have we provided in terms of finances and other resources? from grants, from loans, from the state government, which are geared towards eliminating LGBV, PWG, and HP, while at the same time promoting the enjoyment of sexual and reproductive health and rights. There's always a mistake we make every time we call resources. We simply await it with physical cash. We begin to think of Naira and Cobalt dollars and pounds. But resources are beyond Naira and Copper. If you understand the concept of resources very well, we have human resources. We have information as a resource. We have ecological resources. And our ability to convert science into technology is also about technological resources before we come down to the fiscal cash. And I dare say that human resources is the most important of all the resources. And how you harness your human resources to achieve other ends is exactly what determines the level of your civilization, is what determines the level of your protection of human rights and fundamental freedoms, and quite a lot of others. So money, yes, is important. Res human resources, extremely important. And it is the role of governance to harness these different resources into synergizing into the, you know, that holistic approach that gives you the optimum use of your resources. Recently, if you have been following the news, Nigerians were debarred from obtaining immigrant visas from the U.S. But an American, uh, an American uh, uh, journalist who works for CNN did a comparative analysis to say that Nigerians in the United States, they have comparatively, they have more first degrees, higher degrees than the average American. 
Did you hear what was said? Yes. But most of these people did not school in Harvard or London School of Economics. They school in Ife. They school in Unilever. They school in Ibaco. They school in Osaka. The they leave before they left here. And why did they leave? Because we made the situation unbearable for them. So a good number of those guys, as gentlemen and ladies, are very high qualified doctors, brain surgeons, specialists in all parts of the body. But where are we in Nigeria? Where are we? You know, we don't have them. If anything happens to us, we fly out. Yet our men and women are the best in all in the health sector in all parts of the world. It's not that they were even in America. They all school here before they left. So that's why I say human resources is the biggest of the resources. And how you manage it will even bring you more money or less money. And that we are doing this and using our money to train experts and we finish training them. Somebody else takes them shows a governance failure. So that's why I'm trying to point out that Human resources is beyond money. It's about how you manage even your home, how you manage your family, your community, your local government, the state level, and everything about my proper management.